Now, some of you watching will recognise the man we're about to show you. It's uh, Spencer Matthews from Made in Chelsea, or you might recognise him from his appearance on I'm a Celeb. But what you might not know is there's a tragic story in his past of how he lost his brother, Michael, when he was just 10 years old. Now, at 22, Michael Matthews became the youngest British person ever to reach the summit of Everest. This was back in 1999, but sadly, he vanished just three hours later. Well, now, over two decades later, Spencer actually went to Mount Everest with a documentary crew to try and find the missing body of his brother and bring him home. Uh, well, earlier this week, I spoke to him about that journey and he told me what sparked his mission to find Michael after all this time. So I've always had um, in the back of my mind a desire to recover Michael even, even before it was possible, you know, almost in like a kind of juvenile way. Like I've always thought oh, it'd be great to, uh, to bring him home somehow. Back in 1999, that wasn't possible. You couldn't fly helicopters into Camp 2. In 2017, uh, the family received a photograph of a body um, on Everest face down that looked like it could be Michael, you know, very similar summit suit, if not, you know, the same summit suit. Um, and, he, and he just looked kind of in plain sight. You know, he looked accessible. Um, so I contacted Mike's uh, old climbing partner, David Rodney, Dave Rodney, um, and flew over to see him in Canada to show him this photo. And he believed as well that it could be Mike. And we compared the summit suit to Dave's summit suit, which was the same. And there was so much similarity that we thought that, you know, that was a strong enough lead uh, to get a team together and go to Everest. So not only is this a journey, uh, this documentary journey, just looking at, looking, focusing on, on your search for Michael, but it was from watching it, it looked like this is also a journey when it came to your own grief, your own mourning. I mean, when, when you say you met, you met Dave, you also got to watch the only video that, you, that your family ha have of Michael? Yeah, so, 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 so when Dave told me that, um, I just couldn't wait to get to, to Canada, you know, and I, I wanted to watch it for the first time yeah. with him. Uh, and that's exactly what we did. And it was kind of, uh, as well as being uh, you know, emotional. It was, it was, it was kind of awesome. You know, like getting to see him again. Because the last time I had seen him moving, or the last time I'd heard his voice, was when I was ten. Well, what was you, your relationship like? I mean, I'm asking you, but you've described him as he was your guy. He, yeah, he was my guy. You know, we were described as kind of twins separated by time. There was a 12-year age gap, so he kind of really just looked after me. You know, he was the he was, as I understand it, the person in my family that really wanted my parents to have another kid. So he was. Um, I just felt really like loved by him. My bond with Michael was was quite special, and, and I, I wanted to be just like him. And it was it was a huge decision uh, to make to to follow. Uh, the journey that, that Michael when you had to leave you know your family you know wife Bo, you just had a new baby as well and what what and you put lots of things in place you put lots of things in place in terms of how to make sure that when you go out there you too are also safe and also the team with you yeah I mean that that was the, there were two big decisions uh, you know we had to get comfortable with um, when when looking at this and and one was whether or not we want to recover Mike's body, whether or not it's worth it, you know, in terms of risk. You know, the very last thing that we would want is for somebody else to get hurt or, or worse, you know, on, on our expedition to try and find Michael. Um, and in order to get comfortable with that, we needed to, to speak to, um, you know, the best possible team that we could find. And then the other big decision was um, to, to document the journey. and. The reason that that became important to me was because I really want Michael to have a legacy. You know, like, to me and to our family, Michael lost his life when he was 22 years old. He was the youngest Brit at the time to, to climb Mount Everest. He successfully did so. Um, that takes enormous amounts of, of kind of guts and courage and, and bravery. And, um, and he, it kind of feels to me like he's just been forgotten um, and left there, you know, so it's kind of, you know, in, in a kind of selfish way almost, I want people to know who he is. Are you happy you did it? It was, it was easy, yeah, I, I am. Uh, if there is a silver lining that Michael died when I was 10, when I was so young, because it didn't hit me like it hits, you know, my, my brother, my sister, my mum, my dad. Um, you know, that, that harsh reality that he was dead, um, 
didn't didn't settle into me in the same way that it is. I never really believed it. I couldn't quite understand why people did, didn't just have that assumption that he would come back down. You know, I was I was so young that I didn't really understand death, and as a result, I, I didn't process it in the way that others might. And 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 I um I got to know him, to you know, much the better in these final days, like, speaking to people that knew him. Right spending time with some of his friends, watching this old footage, retracing his exact steps, spending four and a half weeks at base camp, um, was just really interesting. And it allowed me to move through some of those more painful feelings. Well, it's, it's an incredible journey to watch you on this journey. And it's available right now on Disney+. Plus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Spencer. So good talking to you. Thank you.